as we're learning more about neuroanatomy and physiology, we're honing in on an important area of the brain known as the limbic system. This region contains the hippocampus, the thalamus, the hypothalamus, and the amygdala. And specifically, it seems to be this amygdala that is one of the more key areas for us to focus on. It's an almond-shaped gland or region in the medial temporal lobe. And the amygdala governs a few different functions. Emotional processing is one of the most key, but also memory. And if you think about this through a evolutionary lens, the fact that we spent over a million years as hunter-gatherers, over 600 generations of people evolved under the pressures of hunter-gatherer living. Well, why is that relevant? Because if you watched your friend eat these, let's say, berries, and then throw up for four hours and die, it would be very important to your survival that that berry was driven deep into your memory. And it's in part the amygdala that governs this function. Now, what seems to be happening modern day is for a variety of reasons, the amygdala is overactive. This may lead to poor memory, but it may more specifically lead to tagging events that are not dangerous or should not elicit a stress response as ones that do elicit a stress response. This is the overactivation of the amygdala or overactivation of the limbic system. And this is a problem because we know that overactivation of the amygdala correlates with an overactive immune system. In fact, in some very elegant studies, they correlated amygdala activity through functional fMRI scans with depression or anxiety, along with more inflammatory monocytes or more inflammatory blood when administering things like endotoxin or LPS. So if you've heard of leaky gut, one of the things that leaks through leaky gut is LPS. This one study in particular found that hyperactivity of the amygdala correlated with blood that was more pro-inflammatory, more reactive to LPS, which leaks through the gut. So, you know, all of this to sort of maybe bring us to this schematic to, to tie some of this together for you. So in healthy physiology, we have normal emotions, we have normal immune tolerance, we have a normal gut microbiota, so normal flora, the resident bacteria, fungi, some protozoa, those are all in balance and you have an intact barrier. That's what you're seeing depicted here by this schematic. Now, in stress physiology, we have depression and anxiety. We have an overactivation of the immune system, like I described a moment ago in these elegant studies showing that people's blood is more pro-inflammatory when they're under stress and or they have a heightened activation of the amygdala. This correlates with dysbiosis, and if you think about it, the resident or commensal microbiota is policed by your immune system. As an example, in inflammatory bowel disease, there's a skewing and imbalance of the bacteria because the immune system is actively attacking the bacterial colony. So part of what can lead to a healthier microbiota is a healthier immune system. <laughs>